Welcome to Stuff Not Taught in School, a series of videos about stuff not taught in school. Many of the topics are sensitive, but all are important. Thus, all ages are encouraged to view. Today I want to speak about if mental health issues can be symptoms of Hashimoto's disease. Dr. David Galipta here. I want to start off with this story. I have a friend who um, nine months ago or, or so, um, we were talking and she was suffering from um, depression, anxiety, poor memory, fatigue, rough, cracked skin, feeling cold, getting sick often, snoring, insomnia, and coughing. Um, I looked online to try to see how to, how to treat her ailments and the most common, most logical things I saw were um, vitamin D deficiency, omega-3 deficiency, and inadequate sleep. So um, I suggested she take those actions and um, it seemed that those things did help somewhat. And then one day I, um, in December, I was doing a search, what causes poor memory? Because I noticed her memory was, was suffering. Uh, it wasn't terrible, she wasn't forgetting names or stuff, but like she'd be forgetting conversations we had. So I did a search, what causes poor memory? And uh, I saw hypothyroidism. I hadn't heard of it before, but I started reading about it. And, and that list of symptoms I just mentioned, I think all of them were, uh, I found a connection for them online with hypothyroidism. So I mentioned to my friend that I recommend she get um, tested for hypothyroidism. And um, basically what ended up happening is that her doctor gave her some standard tests for the thyroid and um, basically she didn't get the, the tests that are needed to determine early uh, thyroid issues until months later, at which point her, T, her uh, thyroglobulin antibodies were at a concentration of over a thousand international units per milliliter, whereas they should be at a concentration of less than two um, international units per milliliter. So um, basically we'd still need to uh, get an ultrasound to confirm it, but it, it's pretty obvious that she very likely has Hashimoto's disease. Now, what Hashimoto's disease is, and you're probably wondering if you um, haven't uh, heard of it before, basically it's an autoimmune disease in which one's immune system attacks, uh, I'm going to use the term her, just because it's uh, seven times more likely to happen in females. It's when a, a woman's auto, it can happen to, male, to males though, um, when, a woman's auto, when a woman's immune system attacks her own thyroid. And... Um, Eventually, that can cause l less um, T3, T4 um, hormones to be produced from the thyroid, and along the way, it can cause a bunch of symptoms, such as the ones I just mentioned. So, um, for instance, I want to I want to read. This is a book called Hashimoto's Protocol, which I bought after my friend um, got her. Um, got her lab reports, got her lab test back. Um, basically, and this is by Dr. Isabella Wentz, who herself had Hashimoto's disease, and uh, she was a pharmacist, still is, um, but she's basically dedicating her life now to educating people about Hashimoto's disease. And this is a wonderful book. Anyone who, uh, who has been diagnosed with it or thinks that she has been, um, truly recommend this book. Here's a quotation. Complicating matters further is the fact that many thyroid symptoms are very specific, which is why the medical, sorry, complicating matters further is the fact that many thyroid symptoms are very nonspecific, which is why the medical community often disregards them in the initial stages. It's not uncommon for patients to be dismissed as having depression, stress, or anxiety, and to be given antidepressants or anti-anxiety medications without thyroid function ever being considered. Some patients have even been misdiagnosed and hospitalized with bipolar disorder or schizophrenia when in fact they were suffering from thyroid imbalances. Now, um, there's also another study online where a patient was um, uh, having um, paranoia and auditory hallucinations. The person was put on Zyprexa, which is a terrible drug, uh, has not undergone su sufficient laboratory test and causes a lot of side I, I need to say can cause a lot of side effects, including death. Um, anyway, this person, uh, they, got, they tested this patient's um, thyroid antibodies. They were high. Took the, per the person off Zyprexa, put the person on thyroid treatment, and the person recovered. 
So the person did not have schizophrenia or, or paranoia. Or, I mean, it was suffering from the symptoms of those things. But um, once the person's thyroid is fixed, those person's symptoms disappeared. Here's the thing. Depression isn't a disease. It's a symptom of something, such as um, maybe vitamin D this, the deficiency or more likely than we know of Hashimoto's. Um, so it's not that that person wasn't depressed. It's that that person or, or people uh, cited in this book are not depressed. It's that they might be depressed. They don't have depression, but rather they are depressed. Be they suffer from, they have a symptom of depression because of something like Hashimoto's. Nonetheless, most researchers have now concluded that traumatic stress can also be one of the environmental factors for developing Hashimoto's. Research has connected childhood traumatic stress caused by physical abuse, sexual assault, neglect, home dysfunction, and the like to increase incidence of hospitalization due to autoimmune diseases later in life. And by the way, the book does mention that um, some people do uh, think that all autoimmune diseases are the same disease, just ta targeting other organs. Um, the link, isn't not, the link isn't limited to childhood. Battered person syndrome, which is experienced by people who are victims of physical, emotional, and sexual abuse, usually at the hands of romantic partners, by definition includes health-related complaints such as asthma, an autoimmune disorder, and fibromyalgia, often connected to Hashimoto's. So, um, another key point just about um, the, um, the, the childhood and how the, the child was home dysfunction and neglect uh, I want to talk briefly about psychological maltreatment and in this um, pamphlet it just um, some of the effects from psychological maltreatment which I wanted to do a whole video about that as well but just things like anxiety, depression, negative self-concept, pessimism, self-criticism, catastrophic thinking and immature defenses, eating disorders, emotional instability, impulse control problems, bipolar disorder, social phobia, impaired social competency, lack of empathy for others, attachment, insecurity and disorganization, self-isolating behavior, extreme dependency, aggressive and violent behavior, impaired learning, this, impaired learning despite adequate ability and instruction, decline in IQ over time, impaired moral reasoning, asthma, and risky sexual behavior. Basically the link between um, psychological maltreatment and asthma should be the same, or rather likely could be the same link as psychological maltreatment and Hashimoto's or all um, autoimmune conditions. So. Um, I can't tell you offhand if that you do have uh, Hashimoto's. It, um, it generally does need to be treated. Uh, sorry, it doesn't need to be treated, but it generally does need to be tested. I have a friend who felt that she had it and decided to treat it without actually being tested, and she feels a lot better. So, hey, maybe she does have it and, and never got diagnosed and is treating it anyway. So that's cool, but um, it's useful to get it tested. At most, it should cost you like $300. Um, people have spent like tens of thousands of dollars or at least ten thousand um, dollars to get things to get how she, to figure out what was wrong with their bodies and the symptoms I mentioned before if you have any of these things anxiety depression fatigue insomnia um, things like that there's a good chance that it might be Hashimoto's especially if you're a female which as Wentz points out females likely have a greater chance of uh, of developing Hashimoto's than males because of makeup use it's makeup general, generally, not always, but generally tends to be full of toxins. And I'm planning to do another video later on. Even the stuff that's not full of toxins shouldn't be used because you are beautiful without it. And I'm not saying that to be funny. I truly mean it. Um, also, makeup makes people look like clowns. And whenever I see someone wearing makeup, I go like... Doo, 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 doo. Anyway, um, so getting tested for, for Hashimoto's. And I'm, I, I've mentioned hypothyroidism before. Hypothyroidism is when the thyroid does not produce enough um, hormones. The mo a very common cause of that is Hashimoto's um, disease. The, it could also be iodine deficiency, but that's, that's much rarer nowadays than Hashimoto's disease because of stress uh, and environmental toxins and stuff. Wentz goes through all this in the book. Um, is, this the, is, is Hashimoto's Protocol by Isabella Wentz the best book on Hashimoto's Protocol? I can't say. I didn't read every book, but I know that it is, it is fabulous. Um, the, the only book I recommend more than that is, is Why We Sleep by, um, by uh, Matthew Walker because everyone needs to sleep whereas not everyone has Hashimoto's. But like, even if you don't have Hashimoto's, just 
to read that um, and just to know about it so you can help people. I mean, um, I was talking to, uh, to someone, she's mentioning her symptoms, and I'm just saying, like, it sounds like Hashimoto's, and I looked, and sure enough, her, like, um, outer third of her eyebrows was thinning, and that's a symptom of Hashimoto's. Um, her hair was thinning. She was talking about how that's been happening for a while. That's a symptom of Hashimoto's. I know for sure she has Hashimoto's. I didn't test it, but um, it's one of these things, it's like, oh, we can't say for sure without further testing. It's like, um, Lily, um, just made a, uh, a video the other day about um, autism and like she had to say like the cause of autism is not yet known we know what causes it um, so it's that kind of thing um, so regarding testing if you think you might have it the idea is that you go to a doctor and you're like my thyroid's bothering me if your doctor um, decides to cooperate the doctor probably is going to test TSH, which is the thyroid stimulating hormone, which is produced by the pituitary gland um, by the brain, um, like next to the brain. Um, and then the doctor also might test for T3 and T4 hormones. The problem with that is that those things tend to not be, um, especially TSH, tend to not be affected until much later on. So someone can suffer for 10 to 15 years with these symptoms, be, called, be told, oh, it's all in your head, or oh, you need antidepressants, when the person basically had her her auto her immune system was attacking her own thyroid. She had Hashimoto's for 15 years, but her TSH levels were not um, affected yet. So the doctor didn't uh, do anything about it. Once talks about all this, um, basically. So what what I recommend you do is go to a doctor. In addition to those three tests, TSH, T4, and T3, um, demand the reverse T3. Or demand the um, thyroid peroxidase, the TPO antibodies, and a thyroglobulin, which is the TG antibodies. Um, with my friend, it was her TG antibodies, which were a thousand instead of a concentration of a thousand I use per ml rather than um, two I use per ml. So um, basically, she had gone to a doctor initially. The doctor was like, "Oh yeah, your TSH is fine." It wasn't until she finally convinced her doctor to test her TG that she got the uh, we had that strong feeling that she has Hashimoto's, um, which is just an ultrasound short of um, of diagnosis, which. An ultrasound would basically find nodules, and that would be like the telltale sign of uh, of Hashimoto's, which even without the even without the um, the nodules, Hashimoto's can exist, and uh, even without a biopsy, Hashimoto's can exist. Once talks about this and says that even without a positive diagnosis, like my friend who said she thinks she has it, um, you can still try to treat it and see if it gets better, because a lot of these things like triggers, like even if you don't have Hashimoto's, if you if you get rid of stress in your life, you're probably gonna feel better. Um, and basically, those six tests, um, which I plan on listing down in the description section as well, um, demand from your doctor that those, that those be tested. If the doctor does not cooperate, find a new doctor. If you cannot find a doctor who's going to do it, and like you like, whatever, don't spend like three years looking for a doctor, but like whatever, spend a week looking for a doctor, make some calls if, the, if you can't find a doctor who's willing to do it. By the way, check out the um, Institute for Functional Medicine. I plan on linking that as well. Uh, check their database for suggested um, um, functional practitioners because functional practitioners understand this and they're more likely to test um, your thyroid to test your thyroid antibodies than people who uh, than doctors who just uh, know uh, one page worth of material about thyroid um, by the way my doctorate is in science education and I I'm more confident about Hashimoto's than I am about what I learned for four years about science education so So title doesn't mean anything. Just because a person's a doctor doesn't mean that that person knows um, anything about the thyroid. So I recommend finding a doctor who, who is willing to test those things. And if not, you can go to ZRT Laboratories and order the blood and urine um, thyroid test, and that's $300. And um, unless you live in New York or I think one other state, you can get it mailed to you. If you do live in one of those other states, uh, call them up and figure out how to do it. You can like have it sent to a relative in like whatever New Jersey say and then like do the testing there and then mail it back. So there are ways around that. Um, and basically with that information, um, it's basically you prick your finger, you urinate on a piece of um, and cloth, whatever it is, you send it back, you're able to test heavy metal contamination and those six tests I just mentioned. If you feel that you are suffering from um, any of those symptoms I mentioned, remember that those aren't actually conditions. Those are symptoms of a condition. And if Hashimoto's is your condition, can be treated. 
uh, following the protocols once mentions and um, other people talk about it as well. So if you feel like you do have those um, symptoms, I recommend getting checked for Hashimoto's. If you can't find a doctor who's willing to test those six tests, I recommend doing it yourself. It might be the best thing you do.